Welcome to Strategic Planning, HPA 400, The Principles of Public Health Management. The learning objectives for this module is to give you an understanding of strategies, strategic planning, and strategic management. To understand the process and the different stages of planning and management. Also, to understand the impact of environmental analysis on strategies. How to use a SWOT analysis. What does SWOT stand for? S-W-O-T stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. How to use SWOT analysis to formulate strategies. The Porter Five Forces model allows you to understand the profitability, the evaluation of your organization's future and current status. You will also understand the differences between a vision statement and a mission statement. With a clear understanding of strategic planning and management, you'll be able to lead your organization as a public health leader. What is strategy? It is a series of coordinated action plans to pursue the organization mission to reach its targeted goals and objectives. We've already learned how to define goals as SMART goals. In our previous module, we learned the definition of SMART goals, defined as specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed. A set of decision-making rules guides the organization behavior in reaching these SMART goals. Tactics are the methods and actions used to accomplish the strategies, the specific how-to of the process. In an organization, the board of directors often decides what type of strategies will be used, while the tactics are planned by the department heads. Look around in your own workplace. Who's in charge in describing the strategies? And who else are involved in the tactics and carrying out the strategies? Strategies helps an organization accomplish their goals by developing a competitive advantage. In your previous module, we learn what a competitive advantage. Competitive advantage allows the organization to deliver the same benefits as competition through a cost advantage or a differential advantage. For example, organizational operational effectiveness can help achieve cost advantage. An organization that intends to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage by attracting a number of stakeholders to invest in its local mission. Strategic management is a systematic analysis, decisions, actions, and evaluation as an organization undertakes in order to create and sustain a competitive advantage. What's involved in the systematic approach? First, analysis is a process of evaluating the organization's current competitive position, goals, visions, mission, and strategic objectives. Decisions involves the formulation, the planning, and developing the strategies. Action includes the necessary steps to implement the strategies. Evaluation includes modifying the strategies as needed to create a competitive advantage. Strategic management is a combination of a lot of different planning. For example, strategic planning, capability planning, change management, and in the case of a public health organization, it can also include operational planning. All of these different planning as a part of strategic management requires both a near-term goal-making and a long-term strategic development. 
This is a creative process that needs a vision for the future and focus on the present. The characteristics of a strategic management are that it's interdisciplinary. It doesn't focus on one specific department. It is also externally focused. You will learn about environmental scanning as an approach to examine the external forces. The internal focus examines the internal resources of an organization and how it functions, what are some of its capabilities, the strengths, and its weaknesses. It also includes the view of the future of the organization. It looks to understand what the future holds and how it might be in the next few years and how its mission can play a role in its overall vision in the field. Management vision imagines what the organization must achieve in its aims and goals before it seeks to reach them. It describes the shape of the organization that the manager proposes to develop. There's a series of steps. First is establishing the vision statement. The vision statement defines what your organization will do and why it will exist in the future. The vision statement is inspiring, overarching, and has long-term goals. It is a statement of the organization's future and what it is and what it is to become. Strategic vision built upon four elements. First, it describes the future course of the organization to its stakeholders, to its employees, to its community. It's the where we are going statement. Second, it describes the purpose for the organization. Third, it is usually a brief statement on what the organization does to achieve its purpose. Fourth, it is a statement of broad long-term goals for the organization. The mission statement is the organization vision translated into a written form. It provides a sense of direction to guide the action steps and the decision making in its present organization purpose. It defines the overall goals, SMART goals. It answers the question, what the organization are we in? For example, in public health, are we focused on public health safety? Are we focused on infectious disease control? Are we focused on obesity control? A mission statement should define what the organization is, defines what the organization aspires to be, defines the limitation, if any. It gives a broad enough opportunity for creative growth, defines what distinguished the organization from other organizations in the industry, defines the framework to evaluate current activities, the strategic management process consists of five interrelated stages. First is establishing the organization direction, the vision and mission statement. We just went over the key steps in establishing a vision and mission statement. The second stage is environmental analysis. It consists of goal setting and objective. In the Environmental analysis, it involves an environmental scan and a SWOT analysis. We will cover these two aspects of the environmental analysis in detail here. The third stage is strategic formulation. The fourth is strategic implementation. And the fifth and last stage is strategic control, monitoring, evaluating, and control. As we progress through this course, we will Review stage three, four, and five. For this module, we will continue our discussion on stage one and two. Now we will cover environmental analysis. Environmental scanning involves 
an internal communication of external information about issues potentially influencing an organization's decision process. Surveillance of the organization's external environment is to identify and to predict changes to come and to become prepared and detect current changes that could affect the organization's mission. There are four types of environmental scanning. First is economic scanning. It captures the existing and future trends and conditions that characterize economic activities in all the geographic areas that the organization conducts its activities. So for example, in a public health setting, it involves looking at the economy in which the public health program is being implemented. Is it located domestically, internationally, and how these economic conditions abroad can have an impact on the productivities of the public health programs and goals? Industrial scanning involves analyzing the organization sectors that the organization desires to enter. This is commonly used in corporate and profit organization. However, in non-profit organization, specifically in public health setting, you could use the tools from industrial scanning as a way to analyze what's the current trend in public health. What are areas that your organization's strength can be used to help a public health problem? Do you work in an environment where your skill sets by your employees could be a useful tool to help evaluate the situation or to help plan an emergency crisis or be a vehicle to help increase awareness for a specific public health issue. Scanning the external factor is a way to define the past and the future of your organization's mission. You examine the uncontrollable factors that can have an impact on your organization. What are some of the social, legal, political issues that can have an impact in the mission of your organization? Technology scanning is an ongoing study and assessment of tracking trends in your organization, tracking the trends in the industry, what are some of the public health issues? What are the emerging issues coming out? How would technology and innovation influence the public health mission? An example of technology scanning is the use of Fitbits, these tools that are used to track your health conditions on your cell phone or these mobile messaging. These are tools that are driving a lot of public health campaigns. Therefore, as a public health leader, it is important to be aware of the technologies that are existing that can help create new innovative projects that can align technology and meeting your public health mission. In public health setting, we will also examine the macro environmental forces and the micro environmental forces. Examples of macro environmental forces are what are some of the legal and ethical issues? What's the political climate? What is public expectations? What are some of the cultural and sociological forces? It can also encompass the economic and ideological forces. On the other hand, micro environmental forces include the planning, the public policy forces, the competitiveness, healthcare financing, governmental financing, health research, health promotion, and how this integrative approach in primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention in public health forces. SWOT analysis, which stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunity, threats, is a way to identify strategies to create an organization-specific model to align the organization's resources and capability to the environment in which it operates. By looking clearly at the strengths, 
the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It enables an organization to create a strategy that's realistic to distinguish themselves as an organization. Strengths and weaknesses are examining the internal functions of the organization. It looks at the management, the culture of the organization. Opportunities and threats is an assessment of the external factor, specifically looking at the micro or competitiveness of the environment. These factors are beyond the control of the firm. When you conduct a SWOT analysis, you look clearly within. When you look clearly within, you're examining your strengths and weaknesses. When you look outwards to the external world, you are examining where are some opportunities and threats to your organization mission. In this week's assignment, you will be given an opportunity to analyze a strategic plan and to conduct a SWOT analysis of this organization. You will list the strengths and the weaknesses, which are the internal factors of an organization. These are factors that the organization can control. You will also examine the opportunity and threats to this organization. These are factors that are beyond the control of an organization. On the other hand, it is important to identify opportunities and threats to an organization. By identifying these external factors, an organization can prepare its resources to pursue these opportunities as well as prevent these threats. Another important model in strategic management is Porter's Five Forces. Porter's Five Forces includes the following. The bargaining power of the supplier. It is determined by assessing the level of threats that the supplier may reduce the price or the quality of this service. The bargaining power of buyers is determined by how much the consumer can impose pressure on margin and volume. Threats of a new entry determines on the barrier to entry and it can raise the level of competition in the market space. The threats of substitutes exist when there are alternative products or service for a lower price. Industry rivalry describes intensity of competition in an organization and in the industry and how this may affect different organizations on each other. The Porter's Five Forces is a common model used in business and profit organizations. You can use the Porter's Five Forces in nonprofit organizations and in public health setting by analyzing what are the outside influences such as the suppliers. An example of a supplier would be a vaccine company. And let's say you are a public health program providing free vaccines for a community, and this vaccine is only being supplied by this one company. This company then has a strong bargaining power. On the other hand, if this was a vaccine that several companies are offering, you as an organization has the power to bargain with different suppliers. As a public health leader, you will be challenged in situations that require you to become efficient and effective to control the situation in these very dynamic situation. How do you transform your organization in these transient dynamic situations? There's eight steps. First is to establish a sense of urgency. Second, to form a powerful coalition have your alliances together. Create a vision or remind, your, or remind your group the vision statement. Communicate that vision or that new vision under these new circumstances. 
empower others to act on these visions. Plan for and create short-term wins so that you can establish this momentum in this dynamic changing situation. Consolidate improvement and produce while still changing. And institutionalize these new approaches. Even though these are sequential steps, it is important that at every step you gain information and feedback. And with the feedback information, you can proceed with new information to drive these new action steps. In summary, planning can be thought of as a map, a journey. Planning is both a process and an outcome. Planning to achieve the goals and objective, and the outcome is the plan itself.